These notes will help you solve word problems in physics by giving you one hint and a very good method for solving problems. First, the hint. It's a very common experience when you're doing a word problem to feel stuck, to feel paralyzed, and say to yourself, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to take what it says and get the answer. When that happens, there's a mantra, a little saying you want to say to yourself, and that's, if you can't find the answer, just find what you can. So if you feel stuck, just find what you can and write it down. It may not help, but if you keep doing that and finding everything you can, writing it all down, it will help you get further and probably to the final answer. At the very least, anything you write down that's correct will give you partial credit. Okay, here's a really, really easy example of this. And I pick examples that are extremely easy. I know you could do this already. You could do it in your head. But I pick examples that are easy so that we can focus on the method and not worry about how hard the example is. So we're going to focus on this. Pretend you're uh, tutoring someone who's just starting and really having trouble. And we're going to use this approach. Just find what you can. So your student says to you, wait, the support force doesn't have a formula. I don't know how to use the mass to find the support force because I can't plug it into any formula. I feel stuck. I don't know how to find the answer. So you say, just find what you can. Okay, so let's just start drawing. We take what's given and we just start finding what we can. We know the mass that's given. Okay, and we know it's on a floor, so I draw that. And I start finding what I can. All right, well, I already learned about the gravity force, so I know the gravity force points down, and I can find it. Find what you can and write it down. So there I did. It's touching a floor, so I've learned that there's a support force pointing up. So I draw that. Okay, and by doing that, by just finding what I can find, I can find, I can write a, draw a picture of it, I can find the gravity force, I can find the direction of the support force. Now you look at the picture and the answer kind of jumps out at you. By finding what we can, the answer uh, is just one step instead of trying to figure out the whole problem all at, all at once in your head. The answer is just this little bit to finish off here. I know that it's not moving because if it's moving, he has to tell me it's moving. So I know it's sitting still. That means the forces have to balance, so if there's 40 newtons down, there has to be 40 newtons up. That's the hint of if you feel completely stuck, just start writing things down. Just find what you can, write it down, and often that will lead you to the final answer. Okay, and I said there's a method for solving word problems in this class. Here's the method. It's an acronym. It's not actually a word. I know that, but for some reason... This acronym tends to stick in people's heads. GUEX. And you can pause the video and read this. You don't have to take notes on this video. You're not going to be tested on this, right? It's not physics. It's how to solve word problems. But you can pause the video and read it. If you do take notes, that's fine. Here's your five-step process for solving word problems in this class. And even if you think word problems are easy, they're going to get tougher. I strongly recommend you write down something like this, like these steps like what I'm going to do in the next example, on tests especially, so that you'll get partial credit, even if your final answer is incorrect. So let me go very quickly through this, because I know you can pause the video and read it. Givens means the problem itself is going to give you some numbers. Write them down along with the symbols that go with them. You'll see what that means in the example. Unknown means the thing they're looking for, what they're asking a question about. Equation means you hunt through your equations, and at some point in the course there's going to be like seven or eight all at one time that you have to know. Hunt through them until you find the one that connects all these symbols that you've written down up here. Plug the numbers into the equation, and then use algebra to solve it for the thing they want, the unknown. All right, we're going to do an example using this GUEPS method. And here's the example problem. I made it extremely simple, so we don't have to worry about how complicated it is. We're just going to focus on the method. Here's a car. Here's the support force and the friction force they're given, and that's what they want you to find, the coefficient of friction. Okay, so I'm going to push this off to the side and solve this problem using the GUEPS method that I just had on the board. So G stands for givens. You don't have to write the whole word when you're showing your work, just the G. Okay? Uh, support force is 12,000. This is the way I write it. The symbol and equal sign in 12,000. It's very important you put the symbol down because that will help you find the right equation, the equation that has friction or support force in it. It's very important to put the number down because you can use it later. The other given is friction force equals 3,600. So 12,000, 3,600 with the correct symbols. 
Next is u for unknown. That's the thing they want. I'll show you how I write that. They say they want the coefficient of friction. So I write the symbol for it, that mu, the symbol, equals question mark. That way, if I am interrupted and I come back, I can instantly see that that's the unknown. That's what they want me to find. Next is equation. And at this point in the course, there aren't that many equations for you to know, like universal gravitation, gravity near Earth, and friction. And they're all simple. I mean, the, 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 the latter two are simple. Later in the course, though, well, there will be more equations to worry about. So at this stage, you would look through your equations you need to know. Probably you'll have them memorized, so you kind of go through them in your head. And you're wanting to find the one with these three letters in, them, in it, and that would be this one. The one you should be really familiar with now from the homework. That's the equation step. And these equations were invented so we could solve practical problems, and, like build cars and bridges and airplanes and so forth. The next step was P. What's P stand for? It stands for plug. I strongly recommend you do the plugging like in this vertical fashion like this, like a geometry proof. Some students like to do this, and they start writing equation signs this way as if it means like next, next, or their arrows. That's wrong, and if you do that on a test and you use an equation symbol the wrong way, I do take off points, especially if you get the wrong answer doing that. An equation just sits still the way it is like a seesaw. You don't build more seesaws sideways. That doesn't make sense. It's a balance. Each side's the same, and so it balances like a seesaw or a teeter-totter, and so you leave it like that. So you write underneath when you plug. Plugging works like this. Under each symbol where you know a number, you write that number. So for the friction force, I write 3,600. And I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Look at my equation. I looked at it twice. And you see how I caught my mistake? Because everything was written down. So I wasn't trying to do a lot in my head with my memory. I saw FF there and FF here. I knew that couldn't, couldn't be correct and it has to be that one. So F support force is the other one that I'm given. So 12,000. Okay. What about the rest of it? Well, you always bring down the equal sign because an equation is an equation. Equation literally means a thing, an expression with one equal sign in it. That's what an equation is. So I bring down the equal sign. And then what about this thing that is unknown? Should I leave it blank? No. Should you write a question mark? No. What about the letter X for the unknown? No. Because later in the class, we'll learn that X will stand for the quantity position. And you'll, want, you'll have more complicated problems where you have several unknowns. You can't use X for a lot of different unknowns. So you write the exact same letter, right? Mu. You're just going to have to get used to using different letters for the unknown, not just X. All right, the last step was S for solve. Here's where you use your algebra steps to find the unknown, to isolate it, to get it by itself on one side, just like algebra class where you would solve for x. This algebra is a really easy one. Divide both sides by 12,000. I'm going to write it all out because this is a lesson. If you have a really easy algebra problem, I understand it. If you skip some steps and you don't write it all out, that's OK. But I'm writing it all out because it's a lesson. Divide both sides by 12,000 because this, 12,000 over 12,000, makes a 1. I don't like to say cancel, and I'll explain why in class. And this side is a number you can either use, figure out by hand or put into a calculator, and you get a final answer, 0 0.3 equals mu. So it's kind of like following a recipe or a set of instructions or like a computer program. You do these automatically in order, and in basic word problems, this will just crank out an answer for you. And even medium-level word problems, this will work. It's only in the complicated word problems where you might have to do this twice or draw some diagrams, do a little bit more thinking. 